Good morning. I am doing a little bit different type of reading this morning. I am going to use um, my Angel Therapy Oracle cards by Doreen Virtue. And looks like that's coming across backwards. But anyway, that is the, the deck I am going to use today. Same basic format. So I have the deck here. I'm going to shuffle three times. I have already scrubbed the deck. And basically, today is uh, two days into the eclipse and new moon. And here we are. Document what might be going on. For me, a series of uh, family things are sort of unfolding. I woke up this morning with a very bizarre message on my phone. <clears throat> I didn't have my glasses on. And it was my daughter's name, my daughter who is having issues with addiction, who I haven't spoke to in quite some time. So imagine I was, you know, very um, aware that that sort of piqued my interest. I wanted to get up five o'clock this morning, put my glasses on, try to understand what that message was. And within an hour, my phone rings. And it is someone else that is in trouble, my mom. So my sister's on her way to pick up my mom who fell and refuses medical care and cannot move. So we're very suspicious that she may have a broken hip. Just to let you know, spirit, things happen, right? And for me, this six month cycle might be medical in nature. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. I find it really troubling and surprising. My daughter's name came up and without any real reason for it. So I'm really hoping that she's not in trouble at this time, but I, I don't know. I have, I'm clueless and I'm not gonna fill in the blanks because that's a very poor place for me to go because it's scary. So I'm going to take five cards from this deck and I am going to then cut. Let's see, what do we have? We have five, yep. Okay, and I'm going to cut this deck three times. So I'll stick it down here. So one, two, And three. And what do we get? Your purpose involves writing, reading, editing, or selling spiritually based books. And for me, that is true. I'm currently working on a book at this time, which is called 365 Days of Tarot. So for me, a cycle might be closing and then a new cycle opening as I have been working diligently, interestingly enough, on a book. So what I'm asking the cards, these oracle cards to tell us is to kind of focus foundationally on the, this next six month cycle. And for me, it appears that reading, writing and putting things together is where I'm going to be. And of course, I'm in school. So that makes perfectly good sense. So, and this reading, um, let me look at my calendar, is for basically I'm including the 30th as the eclipse, but it, we are we would be the week of the first through uh, the ninth, or yeah, the first through the ninth of May. Okay, and so I'm kind of expecting, in my case, you can see this card is suggesting that my cycle will be very much in the learning or ninth house area. Okay. What might I be learning during this time? And I think maybe universally with Jupiter in Pisces, with uh, Neptune in Pisces, interestingly enough, we get mediumship. You have a natural ability to connect to departed loved ones. Now, in my case, I know this is true. I had a conversation yesterday with a client who had uh, a past loved one. It was a parrot, and I consider animals sentient beings. And we did a reading. And 
uh, from the other side. He said he was a guide and very interesting stuff. Basically, we all have this ability. I did hear someone mention yesterday in a podcast that I listened to that it's wrong to t teach people or tell people that they have this ability. But I, I sort of don't agree with that theory. I think that we all have that natural ability to connect to something just beyond ourselves and use that. Let that, let that be a part of who you are. It's, it's, a, it's reassuring. Our next card during this time, emotional sensitivity, honor and respect your deep sensitivity as it is a gift to all of us. And that would be correct. There is nothing more beautiful than someone who can connect to you and you know that they've connected and you can feel that sense of undeniable love and freedom between the two, the intimate connection that can take place. It, it, it can be utterly beautiful. And I am not talking sexual. I am talking emotional. I, during this time in, in my health crisis, several times now have woken up to a entity being with me my dog growling and barking so that added to the weight that something more was going on yet i felt so comforted i felt so taken care of loved looked after there's there's somebody looking after each and every one of us and we are loved we are maintained but oftentimes we don't know this we've cut ourselves off from our sense of that connection to other or to to our spiritual side so emotional sensitivity it really buys you spirituality okay this card wow our anchor god box right any worries concerns or desires on a piece of paper that you will put in a special container called a God box as a way of letting go and allowing the divine to help you. I will be writing my daughter's name today and putting it in my God box, letting go. I can't do a thing about what has happened. I can only be there when she chooses to do the right things. But codependency says I can't reach down and provide her with what she chooses to deny herself, that I'm only as able to help her as she is able to, to receive that help and not the kind that is going to help her buy more drugs. And that's a, a real dilemma because when we think of help, we want to do whatever we can up to and including things that are really not good for the person who's in trouble. So, so far, what is this reading saying to us? Well, it's saying, you know, the written, okay? And the, and the anchor card is confirming that. Write things down. Put it in your God box. Allow yourself to um, have a place to store what you, what you maybe don't need to carry so so readily learn discover find your way through it okay because neptune and, and uh, pisces uh, neptune and uh, jupiter excuse me in pisces suggests that spirituality is where we're going in addition to that pluto is 28 degrees capricorn getting ready to move into the 11th house of groups where it will then start transforming group dynamics which very likely with uranus in the second and taurus where we are knowing uh some some hardships some unexpected uncomfortable recessionary energy we have the north node saying something's going to happen here and it's not going to be all that bad we have a way forward but south node and scorpio says well we're just going to dig in and we are going to get to the truth we need to find the truth exposing the truth shocking sudden unexpected uranus in the second house referring back up to that 11th house where it belongs saying that for us things are going to change and for the better 
our next card, a heart chakra, okay? And it says, the answers you seek in your heart right now, be open to giving and receiving love. So step into your heart chakra, that big, green, verdant, beautiful place. Go outside, stand in some grass, take in some greenery, go look at new plants to remind yourself that you grow under the sustenance of the sun, just like plants do. That your beautiful green heart chakra that needs that support, give it that support. Green, a very good color for us, okay? I, I have green chakra stones that I keep with me, uh, moldedite, um, Oh, green carnelian. Um, I, I have different things that I wear to keep my, my chakras balanced. And then our final card, the third eye chakra, okay? It, it is safe for you to see the energy of love in all of its forms, such as angels, auras, and visions. So open your eyes. And I noticed that this has got indigo. Be aware. All around you are these star seeds, these kind of these new age energies in people, in animals. It all sentient beings. It's not just it's not just people, by the way. This indigo energy, which what is this indigo energy? Well, this is an, an energy where it's an enlightened energy. It's an enlightened soul that has come here with a slightly different vibration most likely doesn't even know that they've come with a different vibration. The only clue they may have is that they don't vibrate in the same fashion or way that maybe someone else does. And, and it's notable that maybe, like in my case, uh, I've always indicated as an indigo. And I have people tell me, you vibrate a little fast. You're, you're a little uncomfortable for me. So now, is that surprising? No, because... My energy largely is lavender, purple, um, kind of higher-minded in some ways, okay? Does that mean I'm higher-minded? Well, no, but spiritually I might be. Spiritually I'm very sensitive. I, I always have been, and thus I do this work. Don't forget who you are. Write it down. Put pen to paper. And remember your God box. You can let go. It's not easy to do. This morning, I think I saw my daughter's name, and I i know probably in my heart of hearts I want to see her name. I want her to call me. I want her to be okay. I need to give it to my God box. I'm sure there are things out there that each and every one of you need to put in your God box. Remember, document this next six months, 90 days in particular. Go back and look at what you've written down. See if you can associate that with this particular solar eclipse. And largely the solar eclipse is happening in Taurus with Uranus present and the sun and the moon. Lots happening there. So with that, I thank you very much today for joining me. And I will be back next Monday.